PickerMapair.com. We're all in this together. Ed over here at Pick'em Repair and talking about how to test an alternator. So we know that alternators kill Pick'ems. We know that just because an alternator is charging does not mean that it's good. We know that just because you don't have a battery light on doesn't mean that your alternator is good. So how do we find out if the, if the alternator is good or not? Can I test it on the truck? You can test it on the truck, but if you do that and it fails, absolutely there's no question about it, it's bad. If you take it off the truck and you just run over to the auto parts store and test it and say it uh, test bad on their bench, yeah, it's bad. But what about if you test it on the truck and it's good? What about if you take it to the auto parts store and test it and it's good? What about if it's charging? Is it good? The answer is maybe. To find out if an alternator is bad, especially in a power stroke 6 liter, recognize that the number one way that alternators fail is with bad voltage regulators. Bad voltage regulators cause problems, obviously. But bad voltage regulators show their symptoms when they're physically hot. So what we have to do is we have to get the alternator physically hot. If you want to stress test your alternator and find out for sure if it's good or if it's bad, the way to do that is to take the alternator off the truck when the wife's not looking, put it in the kitchen oven 225 for an hour. I know it sounds weird. And by the way, 225, not 400. Let's be smart about this. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to replicate under hood temperatures on a miserably hot day, 100 plus degree day, in traffic, pulling a load. Things are toasty. Let's test the alternator then. So if we go ahead and we test the alternator then, now we've gone ahead and we've, we've gotten up to full operating temperature. Now if it passes, now we can feel good about it. Now, how do we go about doing this logistically? Well, you put it in the oven, 225 for an hour like we talked about. Take it out of there with some, with some shop rags so you don't burn yourself. And hightail it over to the other parts store and have them test it on the bench. They might look at you funny, but it's just a bit understand. So just have them test it and you can feel good about it. Now, if it passes, what do you do with that information? Well, you can know that the alternator was not the cause of the problem with your FICM. Your alternator is still good. Now, should you replace the alternator anyway? Well, the answer is maybe. So, the sweet spot for alternator failure on these trucks is between 120 and 160,000 miles. If you're somewhere in that range or out of that range or approaching that range, there's logic in replacing the alternator proactively. Now, yes, we sell 15 different alternators out of these trucks, and so yes, we can hook you up with any, any of the alternator options that make sense in your application. But now, how do you go about figuring out what alternator to get? Well, that's the subject of another video, so stay tuned.